Hello, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Thank you all for joining us. We'll be getting started in just a minute here. We'll let people filter in and then we'll jump right into it. All right, well, thank you all so much for joining us for our Learning Libby with the Experts webinar. We are going to get started here, but everyone will still be able to filter in. So we have a morning chock full of info for you from the basics, everything you need to know for your day-to-day -day life within the Libby app, all the way to some tips and tricks from us, the experts. We'll take a little break in the middle, give everyone a chance to stretch or try our mini quiz. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll find something that you can really make the most use out of this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started here. My name is Joe and I'm here from Overdrive. Overdrive, of course, we have our original app that we've been using and loving for quite a few years now, uh, but we're also the makers of the Libby app, which is what we're here to talk about, our brand new library reading app. And I am one half of Overdrive's digital bookmobile team. So we have a truck that goes across the US and Canada, visiting libraries and schools, uh, helping people just like yourselves get started. I get to do all of the planning for that tour route, uh, you know, all of the budgets and stops and things like that. But I'm here with the other half of my team. Good morning, hello, my name is Marissa. I always like to give Joe a hard time because uh, I like to say that he has the boring part of our job, which is the desk work. And then I'm who gets to travel with our digital bookmobile all over the US and Canada and help people learn the Libby app. So I've helped hundreds and hundreds, maybe even thousands at this point, uh, people learn how to use Libby from those very basics, including uh, the tips and tricks that we are going to share with you today. So we're very excited to be here, even though right now it is virtually. Yes, even though it is virtual, we are happy to be here and happy to show off our favorite app. So before we dive in, I do have to do my part, the boring part, and give you all the housekeeping this morning. Uh, we do have closed captions enabled for this webinar. So if you want to make use of those, you can tap the button that says CC in your Zoom meeting controls. If you've got them on, but they get in the way on your screen, you can drag them using your mouse to another part of the screen. If you have questions for Marissa and I, you can ask those throughout the entire webinar. Ask us anything at all at any point. If one of us is talking or presenting, the other will be responding in that Q&A. Tap on the box that says Q&A in your Zoom meeting controls, type out your question, and leave that box open because the answers are going to pop up under the Answered tab in that question and answer box. Uh, if it makes you more comfortable, you can even ask questions anonymously. We are recording our webinar this morning, and we will include a link to that recording in a wrap-up email you'll receive tomorrow from Zoom. So keep an eye out for that email. This gives you the chance to pause us, play us back, review anything you wanted to see again, or if you want or need to hop off early, you can review anything that we go over after you left in that recording. It lasts for 30 days before the video expires, but you can download it permanently if you like. Instructions will be in that email. With this in mind, since you'll have access to the recording, we do recommend that you watch us as we go through our basics here and wait to download the app and start playing around until after we wrap up this first half of the webinar. Uh, that way you don't miss out on anything and uh, then afterward, we'll give you a little bit of time to download. When we end the webinar, a survey is going to pop up in your web browser. If you could fill that out for us, let us know what you thought, we'd greatly appreciate it. And then lastly, we are going to connect iPads into the webinar this morning, and sometimes Zoom cuts off or shrinks part of that display. We wanna make sure you can see Libby in her full glory, so we'll be sending out instructions in the chat. Super easy, quick to fix, just follow those steps. It should only take you a few seconds. 
All right, with all of that out of the way, I'm going to take a second here and connect my iPad into the webinar. So I'm going to take everyone through the download and sign-in process this morning before I hand it off to Marissa to take us through those basics. And as I mentioned already, we are both using iPads this morning, but the Libby app is available for download on iOS and Android. So whether it's your Apple mobile devices like iPhones and iPads, or your Android mobile devices like your typical smartphones and tablets, there's too many Android brands for me to name, but think like smart uh, Samsung Galaxies and things like that. And you can also use Libby in your, on your computer in your browser by going to LibbyApp.com. Now, whether you are on Apple, Android, or LibbyApp.com, once we get into Libby, everything's going to look the same regardless of device. So let's start with that download. For my Apple users, you'll be headed to your blue App Store icon. If you're on an Android device, you'll be headed into the Google Play Store. It's that uh, multicolored play button or multicolored triangle. Basically, we just need to go wherever we would typically go when we want to download a new app. From here, I'm going to tap on my search bar and I'm just going to type in Libby and hit enter. Because when I do this, Libby is going to be one of the first results that pops up on my screen up at the top. So we can see right here, Libby by Overdrive, this is what we're looking for. We've got this maroon app icon with Libby reading her book. Now Libby is a free app. All you need to use Libby is a library card and to download Libby. So all you need to do is tap get or install. On my screen it says open because I already have Libby downloaded but on yours, it will say either get or install. So tap that to let the free app download. You might be prompted to sign into your device's app store, depending on your settings, just follow those instructions and let the Libby app download. Once Libby's downloaded, we'll leave the app store and go open up that freshly downloaded Libby app on our screen. Now, the first time we open up Libby, she'll have a few questions for us to help us find our library and get signed in with our library card. We only need to do this the first time we get started, and then Libby's going to remember this info so we can dive right back in. So question one, do you have a library card? I'll say yes. And now we need to find our library location. So my favorite way to do this is with I'll search for a library. And we'll do this in one second. I just wanted to point out up at the top here, copy from my other device. So this is great if you use multiple libraries on multiple devices. So if you are like me, I like to read on my tablet, but also my phone, and then sometimes on my computer at work during lunch breaks. And so I don't have to enter all of my cards in over and over. Once I get my first device set up, I can use this copy from my other device button to pull all of the info in and skip the rest of the steps we're about to go through. So you'll have to go through this first setup and then for your second or third, et cetera, devices, you can use copy from my other device. But let's wrap up our first setup here by tapping on I'll search for a library. I like this because I can search by the name of my library, the city I live in, or my zip code. And I'm actually going to use zip code for this. And there we go. I'm looking for the Falmouth Public Library. I can see there's the building and the address right here. But what we all actually want to see is clams up at the top. So uh, the Falmouth Public Library and the other 44 branches in the system all share one large digital collection across the buildings. And the name of that collection is called CLAMS. So regardless of the building you're from, everyone is sharing books from here. And since we're looking for CLAMS, that's what I want. We're going to tap on that box. All right, we'll wrap up our step here by tapping on enter library account details. 
And from here, all you need to do is type in your library card number and your PIN. Now your card number should appear on the card underneath the barcode typically. And if for some reason you don't know your PIN number or if you have any issues while signing in, just reach out to your friendly neighborhood librarians. They're the ones who keep your library cards working and they'll be able to help you if there's any problems with your cards. And just like that, we're now all signed into our CLAMS digital collection and we have access to the library's complete collection of ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. From here, I'm going to hand it off to Marissa and she is going to take us through the basics, everything we need to know for our day-to-day -day life in the Libby app. Marissa is going to be using a demo library from Overdrive today. We just like to make sure we're not borrowing anything y'all might be waiting for. But everything on her screen, all of the buttons that she'll be using will be exactly the same regardless of the library. You might just see a different logo and some different collections throughout. If you have any questions while we present, feel free to send those through to me in the Q&A and I will get you some answers as quick as I can. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Marissa, it's all yours. All right, thank you, Joe. And I'm gonna leave that question for you. I was halfway through there and we had to switch over. So we will get that question answered about the certificate of attendance here for any library staffs attending uh, today. So before I jump in here, this is typically where Zoom will cut off the bottom of my screen. So um, Joe just set, uh, sent out some instructions for how to change that Zoom ratio. You only need to do it if right now you cannot see my navigation bar at the bottom of the screen. So you should see five icons there at the bottom of my screen, search, library, the Libby icon, shelf, and timeline. If you cannot see those, then the instructions that Joe put in the chat are going to uh, resize your screen. Like he said earlier, it takes a few clicks, a couple of seconds, and then you'll be able to follow along with us um, much more easily. Okay, so we are going to talk about all of these icons at some point in the presentation but i won't do them all at once to overwhelm everyone here so we're going to start out with the library icon it is the second icon there that you see in the navigation bar and it looks like a little library building because we're visiting the library when we tap on this icon so at the library, you will be able to browse your library's entire collection of ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. So I say think of it like you're at the library because I want you to think of it like you're walking around the library, checking out their end caps, their displays, and seeing all of the books available to you. So that library, that library building, the library tab is going to be where you browse, okay? Up at the top of the screen here, this is where you're going to see some filters. These filters are a great place to start browsing for titles. If you tap into just added, you'll see a full list of books that the library just recently purchased and added to the collection. Popular and random speak for themselves there, but available now is going to be a list of titles that currently do not have a waiting list. So they're all available right away. You can borrow them and enjoy them right in that moment. Subjects is probably one of the uh, most popular ways that you can look for a book. This filter here, if you tap into that, you'll be prompted with 159 different subjects. That's romance, historical fiction, biography. And that way, if you are a genre reader in any way, you can find a list of your favorite genre and then you will be able to choose and browse that way. Now, those filters are a great place to start. Now, as I work my way down the screen, I also wanna point out the guides. 
So my guides are going to look a little bit different than yours because I am using a demo library. But the point of the guides are to uh, have the librarians curate these guides to help you explore the catalog. So what that means is maybe you have a kiddo and you want to find a book for them. You can pop into this kid's guide and you'll find curated collections that the library puts together that are specific to kids. So it's going to be juvenile content. If you tap into teens, it's going to be YA content. Uh, there is a really great guide that your library has as well for magazines. So when you want to find magazines, you can tap into that magazine guide and you'll be able to explore all of the magazines that your library has to offer through Libby. Now, once you scroll past those guides, that's when you're going to start to see curated collections that your library puts together for you just for the general public. So these are very much like if you were to walk into the physical library during the winter and you'll see uh, cozy mysteries and holiday recipe guides displayed on an end cap. But if you go back in the summer, that changes over to uh, beach reads. So these guides or these curated collections here, they're going to change throughout the year. The library is always going to show you something fresh and new and exciting. So like I said, the library button there, that's going to be where you browse. So you don't know exactly what you're looking for. You're seeing everything that the library has to offer, the curated collections, the filters, where you can browse lists by certain criteria. However, sometimes you're going to know exactly what you're looking for. You're going to have a specific author in mind or a title in mind, a magazine or series name. And when that is the case, you're going to perform a search instead. So instead of browsing the entire collection at the library, we're going to tap on that magnifying glass where it says search, and then you will be able to perform your search. So. I'm going to search here for a book called One by One. Type in my search term up at the top, and then I'm going to tap on search in the devices keyboard. So you can see this list is showing me 3,600 books, 2,500 audiobooks, and 48 magazines. However, the book that I was searching for is showing here right up at the top of the screen. Now, while we're on this screen, I do want to point out a couple of different things here. The first is going to be how to tell the difference between an ebook versus an audiobook. So the library actually purchases those formats separately. So they buy ebooks and they buy audiobooks uh, individually. And that means you're not going to be able to change over an ebook into an audiobook when you borrow it. You have to borrow it in the format that you want to enjoy it in. And so if you want to listen to a book, what you're going to look like is, or what you're going to look for rather is the square jacket cover. I always like to say it kind of looks like a CD case if that helps uh, keep it in your mind straight. Uh, looks like a CD case. You listen to CDs, you listen to audiobooks. Right underneath that, you'll see a set of headphones, and then you'll also find the duration of the audiobook as well. So, those are three visual indicators that you can use to uh, be able to figure out if that's going to be a book you listen to. If you want to read the book instead, you're going to be on the lookout for this squared or rectangular jacket cover. My shapes getting mixed up today. So rectangle equals ebook, square equals audiobook. And that is how you'll know the difference there. I also want to point out the difference between titles that are available to borrow and titles that currently have a waiting list. So you'll see the audiobook version here says place hold right next to that jacket cover. That means there's currently a waiting list. You'll have to wait in line until it's your turn. And it is a very simple process to place a hold. All you'll have to do is tap on that place hold button. You'll find the confirmation page here. 
And down at the bottom of the screen, it will give you a little estimate for uh, approximately when that book is going to get to you. And if you decide you want to place that hold, you can tap that big maroon button there to confirm. Now, once you have that confirmation that you've placed the hold, you'll have four options for what to do next. If you tap on keep browsing, it's going to send you right back to the same list that you were looking at when you placed that hold. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tap keep browsing. And you can see now that the uh, audiobook version is on my hold shelf. Now I'm going to walk through the borrowing process. This is just as easy. We could tap on borrow right next to that jacket cover. Or if you don't know what the book is about yet, you want to find out more before you make that commitment, you can tap on the jacket cover itself. And that will give you the title details. So you'll be able to find out what that book is about. And if it tickles your fancy, you have a borrow button here on this page as well. And we'll go ahead and tap on that. And this is what takes you to the borrowing confirmation page. Now, up at the top here, you'll see that I'm borrowing this title for 14 days. And 14 days is the default lending period at your library, but you do have the option to switch this over to 21. All you have to do is tap on that 14 days. You'll find a little menu here and you can select 21. And that will allow you to keep the book for three weeks before it returns to the library automatically on its due date. And once you switch it over to 21 for each format, you'll do this for ebooks and then you'll do it for audiobooks. That will then be your default period uh, moving forward. So you'll continue to have books for 21 days. You won't have to keep changing that again and again. All right, I'm going to confirm that I want to borrow this book down at the bottom with that big maroon button again. And now we can see that Libby is downloading this title for offline use. Libby does this automatically when you're on Wi-Fi. And as soon as you get a check mark on a little library card icon there, that means you no longer have to be on Wi-Fi or use cellular data. You could take this up in a plane on airplane mode out in the woods without any cell service, and you'll still be able to open and enjoy your book. Now I'm going to go ahead and tap open book here. And this is going to give us the option to read directly in the Libby app. So in the app that I'm showing off right now, or if you have a Kindle device that you prefer to read on like a paper white, then you do have the option to select Kindle here. You'll be prompted to sign into your Amazon account. So make sure you have your login and password ready. And then you can follow the directions there, a big button that says get library book, very quick, simple process. And that will deliver the title over to your Kindle so you can read it on that device instead. Now, because this presentation is all about Libby, I'm of course going to open it up here in the Libby app so I can show you a few of Libby's key reading features. So when you open a title for uh, the first time here, you're going to have menus up at the top and the bottom of the screen. Now this bottom menu is going to show you your reading progress. So it's taking a second to load. There we go. I'm on page one of 387. To make those menus drop off the screen, all you have to do is tap in the center of the screen and they will disappear. When you want them back, same thing. So always tapping in the center of the screen is gonna bring them up or make them disappear. When you're ready to begin paging forward, that's when you can tap or swipe on the right side of the screen. And I'm gonna page forward quickly here and get to a big old chunk of text so I can show you how to customize your reading appearance to meet your needs. So right now, let's say this font is a little small for me. I'm going to tap on the center of the screen. It's gonna bring our menus back up. 
And you'll see this A icon up in the top right hand corner. That A stands for appearance. So that's what we're going to tap on when we want to change our appearance. Within the appearance menu, there are three things that you can customize. The first is the text scale. So the size of the font here, we can slide up to increase or slide down to decrease. Lighting is also an option here. I'm currently in bright mode. That is Libby's default, but we have sepia and this nice dark mode for reading at night. Our partners will stop yelling at us for keeping them up with our bright screen. So that is a good option there as well. Last but not least, we have book design. Now, book design is just Libby's fancy way of saying font. So these are the different fonts that you can change your book into. I always point out here this open dyslexic font because it might help some users with dyslexia while reading. Now, I know I changed these all to show them off, but I'm actually gonna put them back here to my default. And the reason that I do that is because these settings are sticky. And what I mean by sticky settings is you only have to make these customizations one time per device. And then moving forward, Libby's going to deliver titles to that device with those customizations in place. So you're not going to have to keep on coming back and changing it every time you borrow a book. Libby will remember it and you'll be ready for reading right away. All right, I'm going to tap on hide here. We'll just drop that appearance menu out of the way. And then I'm going to leave the ebook and we're going to pop into an audiobook here. So I'm going to tap on back up in that left hand side of the screen. Just remember if those menus aren't there, you just tap in the center of the screen, they disappear and reappear, and you'll find that back button there waiting for you. So now we're on the shelf after tapping on back. So this is where I reorient everyone down in the navigation bar. So let's head down to the bottom of the screen here. The first thing I'm gonna point out is the now reading bar. Right now it's showing one by one. This is always going to be the last book that you had open in Libby and it's giving you easy access to open that book right back up to the page you left off on. So anytime you see it, you can tap it and open that book right back up. I'm going to dismiss this for now so that we can see the full navigation bar down at the bottom of the screen. So let's just do a quick review here. The first icon we tapped on was that library building there. That is where you go to browse the library's entire collection of ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. You don't know what you're looking for exactly. You just want to see everything that the library has to offer. You can use the filters, the curated collections, and see if something sparks your interest. Then we went over to the search icon. That is when you do know exactly what you're looking for. You want to look for a title or an author or magazine or series name. We're now over on the fourth icon there. It's the shelf that looks like a stack of books. And your shelf is going to be where you find all of your current loans. So those books that you've borrowed digitally through Libby from your library that you currently have on your shelf, and then your holds that you're waiting in line for. So up at the top of your shelf, you'll have filters just like, um, on that library page, if you tap on loans, you'll just look at your loans. If you tap on holds, you'll just look at your holds. But on the main page, you'll see a mixture of the two. If you have a hold available, it will appear at the top. I don't currently right now, so it's just showing me my loans. And these are organized by the last time you open them. So you can see the book that I just borrowed with you showing up here at the top. And then as I make my way down my shelf, we can see some other titles that I've borrowed uh, last week that are appearing below. I'm going to open up my audiobook here. So I'm gonna tap open in Libby here on my shelf. 
And there's two things here that I want to point out. The first is that the reading progress is going to be appearing at the top of your audiobook. I'm 28% of the way through here. And then down at the bottom, you're going to find your player. Once you tap on play, that will start the narrator. Now, you shouldn't be able to hear him on your end, but I can hear him on mine. And the most important thing I can say here about the audiobook experience is that Libby is designed to play your audiobook in the background of your phone. And what that means is you can tap on play and then minimize the app and you can open up online shopping or another app. You could also put your phone screen to sleep and start doing dishes and you'll be able to listen to your book while you do that. Now, with that in mind, the warning that I always give, if you don't know how to fully close the app on your phone, what I want you to do is pause the audiobook when you're done listening to that session. That will stop the narrator from speaking, and then you'll be able to move on with your day without worrying about that, that audiobook playing in the background of your phone, and you'll have to go and find your spot again. So make sure you're tapping on pause. That stops that narrator and then you're gonna be good to go. All right, I'm gonna tap on back here again. That back button's gonna take us right on back to the shelf as we leave that audiobook. And now we're gonna go down to the navigation bar again. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the screen. You'll see that I have a new now reading bar. It's always the last book that you had open in Libby. So it changed over to my audiobook here. I'm gonna dismiss it again. So on your shelf, you're gonna find all of your current loans. These are books that you currently have borrowed in Libby. You can open them up and read them. Next door, you'll see the timeline. It's that clock there, the last icon in the navigation bar. This is your history, okay? So associate timeline with history. It's going to show you every loan that you've ever had in Libby, every hold that you've ever had in Libby, uh, renewals and returns as well. So this is going to show you all of your history within the Libby app, whereas the shelf is going to be your current reads, the books that you currently have borrowed and currently are waiting on the wait list for all right, we're going to finish off here in the very center of that navigation bar, that Libby icon that you see there. You can think of the Libby icon as your app settings. We call it the Libby menu, but if app settings helps remember uh, what that Libby icon does, then feel free to uh, figure that or to use that in your brain there to keep it straight. Now, the first thing I wanna point out here is up at the top of the screen, you'll see this box. Now, right now it's telling me to manage my notifications because I don't have any notifications currently. In this box, you'll always find any notifications that you have regarding a loan becoming or hold becoming available or if a loan is gonna return on its due date. And I'm gonna tap into this menu to show you how to manage those notifications. And uh, Libby actually brings this menu to you the very first time you place a hold. So it's gonna be easier to find than what I'm doing right now. This is after you've already done it the initial uh, time that you're prompted. Anytime you wanna make changes, you'll have to come into the Libby menu. But I do wanna show you what that's gonna look like when Libby does bring that uh, and prompt you to manage your notifications. So this is how you can get alerted about important events within the Libby app. There are three ways to be alerted up here. The by default, the notification you'll get is a push notification, this blue line here. A push notification appears on your device's screen regardless of what app you have open. That means you could be looking at Libby, but you could also be looking at Facebook or look, reading the news. And if an alert comes in, it will appear on your device's screen right there for you to see. Now you can switch that over to a menu badge if you'd like,
but that is going to be an in-app notification. That means you'll have to open up Libby to be able to see it. It won't appear outside of the app. And you actually just saw where I pointed out that's going to be that box up at the top of the Libby menu, your notifications will appear there instead. Also, you can ignore if there's something that isn't very important for you to get alerted for. Now, right below that are all of the things that you can be notified about. The most important is hold ready. And I really recommend that you keep your notification settings set to that blue notification line, that push notification that appears on your device's screen, regardless of what app you have open. And the reason I recommend that is because when it's your turn on a wait list, you will have a three day period where that book is sitting in limbo and you are the only person who can take action on it. The three actions that you can take in that limbo period are to borrow the book, to cancel the hold, or to have the hold delivered later. Delivered later is a really nice feature if you get busy and you're not going to have time to read the book. You can set a time period where Libby keeps you at the top of the wait list. And then when that time period ends, you'll be the next person in line. Now, in that three day limbo period, if you don't cancel, borrow or deliver later, then Libby is going to automatically deliver the title later one time as a courtesy. And uh, you'll get another, it's a second round of a three-day limbo period. If in the second three-day limbo period, you don't take action again, Libby will cancel your hold and you'll have to go and find the book again and rejoin the wait list, which puts you at the bottom. And it can be a day ruiner if you wait five weeks for a book and then you have to join the wait list again and wait another five weeks. It's really more of a week ruiner for me, but... Um, that is why I say it is really important to make sure you're getting notified when it's your turn on the wait list, when your holds are ready. All right, I'm going to come back up here and tap on back and take a quick sip of water here. The next thing we're going to talk about is your libraries. You can add as many library cards as you'd like to Libby from different libraries. And this is going to strengthen the amount of collections that you have available to you. And what is um, so awesome about Massachusetts, and Joe and I are wildly jealous of you, is that your single library card allows you to sign in to a total of eight digital collections. This is unlike anywhere else in the United States. That's why we're so jealous of you. Having eight collections available to you is a game changer. You can um, find shorter holds lists at each of your libraries. You can also find books that maybe one library doesn't own and others do. And so I want to show you and walk you through the steps on how to add those additional libraries here. So when you watch this recording, you can follow these instructions. What you're going to do is come down to add library here in the Libby menu. And you'll recognize this, but I want you to actually ignore library name, city or zip. And instead, I want you to type in Massachusetts. OK, and. When you type in Massachusetts, let me drop my keyboard out of the way here, every result that comes up on this screen is going to be a library collection that you can sign into. So you can start at the top of the list and work your way down. You'll continue with these steps. Let's start at Noble here. I'll click that or tap on that red box. You'll see we're now looking at Noble's collection. And down here at the bottom of the screen, instead of tapping interlibrary account details, because you're visiting from CLAMS, you're going to say, I'm visiting from another library. And then you'll select CLAMS when you're prompted. 
Once you select correct plans, you'll be prompted to sign in to your uh, library card number. And this is the same library card number that you use to sign into CLAMS. So that's what makes it so easy for you there. You use the same library card number and pen, and you'll be able to sign in to all eight digital collections. Once you have all eight of those digital collections attached to your first device, that's when we recommend using that copy with a setup code to your second device, and you'll be able to use one eight digit code instead of having to do this step a bunch of, um, and over and over and over again. All right, I'm going to come back to the Libby menu there in the center of the navigation bar. Just one more thing to talk about here, which is help and support. So I'm going to come down to settings. There's one thing I want to show you that's pretty important here in this settings menu, and that is how to customize your navigation bar. So you'll notice my navigation bar has labels underneath each of those icons. This is something that you have to turn on, but I think especially for new users, it is very, very important to do that. It makes it so much easier to know where you're going. So in that settings menu, you'll come down to custom navigation. It's that second to last option there. And then down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see navigation bar and you can toggle on your icon labels. You'll see I toggle them off, those labels disappeared. I bring them back and they show up again. So that really helps, especially if you're just getting used to the Libby menu uh, for the first, or the Libby app for the first time. I'm gonna come back up to back here. We're gonna go back to help and support. And now I'm gonna show you how to get some help. So right now during the webinar, you have Joe and I at your disposal. You can ask any questions that you uh, need and we'll give you those answers. After the webinar ends, you can go to the library for help or you can also contact Overdrive Technical Support right here in the Libby menu. So up at the top of the screen, you'll see how can we help. This is a nice way if you have a simple question, if you just want to know how to return a title, for example. I don't prioritize returning titles here in the uh, getting started session because I stick to those need to know features to function day to day. And because titles return automatically on their due date, I don't prioritize it. But here is how easy it is to find out simple features like that. I'm going to tap on search. We have a few uh, articles here that Libby is thinking that I might be looking for. I am looking for returning books, so I'll tap on that. And here she does give the instructions for how to return a title early if it's finished before the due date. Now, like I said, you can also ask our technical support team down here at the bottom if you tap on this. You can ask them a question, you could submit a problem, or even give an idea if you have a feature that you want to see within the Libby app. And this will connect you with Overdrive technical support specialists. They are Libby experts, even more than Joe and I, uh, because they do it eight hours a day. We do it like three hours a day. And they are a very friendly group of folks. The turnaround time for your email response is within 24 hours. Usually it's within five or six hours. It very rarely gets up to 24, uh, but keep that in mind as well. And that is uh, what wraps up our getting started session. Those very basic need to know features of the Libby app. I'm going to let Joe take back over the screen here and he's going to get us into some next steps. Awesome. Thanks, Marissa. And thank you all. That does wrap up our getting started portion of the morning. This is now where you have a little bit of time if you'd like to download the app, uh, start signing in, and start sending questions through if you have any while you are working your way through. Of course, you can ask us any of those questions you might have using the Q&A, and you can even ask questions anonymously. 
We're gonna skip over our mini quiz for now though, because we are almost at that 1045 mark where we'll be headed into our deep dive session. Now, a note on the deep dive, we will be going into four of our favorite tips and tricks before we open up at the end for a large Q&A with on-screen demo directly in the Libby app. Um, we will move at a faster pace through these four uh, tips, and we recommend only sticking around for this if you are feeling confident and ready to learn more. We don't want anyone to uh, leave uh, or feel frustrated or overwhelmed with info, uh, so we recommend that you hop off uh, in just a minute here before we dive in. I will give you a last call for that. Um, and remember, you will receive that recording tomorrow morning in an email from Zoom, so you'll be able to review anything you might have missed if you want to hop off then. We recommend it because we want everyone to be as comfortable as possible. So take a minute here if you'd like, feel free to stretch, get some coffee, and we will uh, dive into our getting started session at 10.47. So if you want to take a minute or two to get yourselves comfortable and situated or download Libby, Bryce and I will hang out here, answer any questions that come through, and then we'll get rolling in about two minutes. If you are hopping off, of course, you can tap leave in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And when you do, a survey is going to pop up in your web browser. Fill that out for us. Let us know what you thought today. And uh, we'll look forward to you being able to review that video tomorrow. Uh, that video does last for 30 days and then it does expire. But if you'd like to keep it permanently, you can click the button that says download. All right, and I'm just going to get us moving into our next section here. So once again, thank you all so much for joining us today. If you are hopping off, this is your last chance to do that. But now we are going to move forward into our tips and tricks. It doesn't look like we've had anyone join us uh, since we started this morning. So I'm gonna move through this fairly quickly. But thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Joe and I'm here with Marissa and we're about to go into four of our favorite features of the library reading app Libby. Just as a reminder, we do have closed captions enabled and you can adjust those in your Zoom meeting controls where you will also find the Q&A button to ask us questions throughout. Of course, you can ask us those questions at any time. Uh, more often than not, in this part of the presentation, you will see that some questions will be marked to be answered live because we will save about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the webinar to go over any questions uh, directly within the Libby app. All right, so four of our favorite tips and tricks that we'll be covering today. First, we're going to talk all about magazines, uh, some of the great new updates that have come through that we are just absolutely in love with. And then we are going to look at filtering and refining lists. This is some of our favorite ways to find the books you like faster and set app-wide preferences to really help cut out anything you don't wanna see. Then we'll go into our favorite tip of them all, tags, what they are, how we use them, and hopefully some ways that you can use and love them as well. Before we wrap up with making and exporting notes and highlights, a feature for more than just people in school. I'm gonna let Marissa get connected now. She'll be back in that demo library in Libby. And once again, I'll be hanging out in Q&A if you have any questions.
Lots of great questions so far, keeping you busy, Joe. Uh, just a reminder, if you did ask a question, you can find the answers in the answered tab on the Q&A uh, section of your Zoom meeting controls. Um, and we are going to dive right into our tips and tricks here. The first tip we're going to talk about is the magazine experience. So I am currently on my shelf because I already downloaded a magazine. Um, if magazines are image heavy, so they do take a minute to download and I don't want to slow things down here. So I'm just going to open up this issue of popular mechanics right here on my shelf. Now, when you open a magazine, you'll have menus just like in that ebook and audiobook experience, but magazines will also have this row of thumbnails here where you can see each of the pages of the magazine. If you want to use this to navigate, you can tap on any of these thumbnails and it will take you right over onto that page. I always joke, this is definitely a feature made with people with perfect vision. My eyes can't quite make out what those pages are. So I navigate in a different way, but this is an option for you. I see it used all the time. I am gonna show you a few other ways to navigate as well. So I'm gonna tap on the center of the screen here, drop those menus out of the way. And then just like in an ebook, you can tap or swipe on the right side of the screen to page forward. Now, if you like to look at the whole magazine, the ads and the articles, tapping or swiping is going to work best for you. But if you're like me and maybe sometimes you borrow a magazine because one article jumped out or two articles were what you were interested in reading, then I like to just navigate, tap or swipe until I get to this table of contents. And then these are all links. So we can tap on any of these articles here to jump to that specific article. So let's say I wanna look at the article about the outdoor awards. I just have to tap on that. Libby jumps me right over to page 58. Now this right here, what we're looking at is the traditional magazine view. And this works well on larger devices like a computer or those big iPad Pros. If you're on a smaller device, you might want to use the article view that I'm gonna show you here instead. So down at the bottom of the screen, this was a recent update that we love. This circle with the page moving up and down, this is the article view. If you tap on that icon, the article is going to appear in this menu here. This is a scrolling menu, so you can read the article just by swiping your finger up and down the screen. And what's really awesome about this view is that you can customize your appearance. So I showed you those steps in the getting started session. You can use those same steps to uh, customize your reading appearance here in the article view. However, if you've already done that in an ebook, it will carry on over to your magazine experience and that font will be the size that you like, the background color will be whatever you chose when you customize that ebook experience as well. Some other awesome updates that I love are over on the left side of the screen. You'll see those arrows pointing forward and backward. Those skip you over to the next article. So you'll see if I tap on forward, it's going to skip over the ads and take me over to the next article there. Back is gonna do the same thing. Occasionally you'll find an advert, uh, but it, it really minimizes the amount that you'll find here on the screen. Now, right in the center there, you'll see this table of uh, contents icon. This is another way that you can navigate throughout Libby. And this will allow you to choose what article you want to read next by article title, and it keeps you in the article view. So that's what I really like about it. Let's say I wanna look at this article about B52s. I can tap on it here and I'm still in that nice article view where I can scroll and my font size is customized to my needs. Now, when you are done reading your magazine, 
If you're in the article view, you can leave that by tapping down or back. It doesn't matter which one you choose. That will take you back to the traditional magazine view here. And then when you're ready to leave the full magazine, you tap in the center of the screen and that will appear, that will make the back button appear up in that menu. So you can tap on back just like in the ebook and audiobook and it will take you right on back to your shelf. And that's our quick and easy tip magazines and how to enjoy and navigate throughout that magazine experience. We're now gonna move on to tip number two, which is all about filtering and refining your searching and browsing so that you can find the books that you like faster. So I'm gonna come down to the library icon here. We're gonna browse around. And for this tip, I give a little prompt. Uh, so some criteria we're going to use to look for a book. So let's pretend that uh, tomorrow my mom and I are going to go on a road trip. And for our road trip, the book we're going to listen to a book, obviously. So let's say I need this book to be an audiobook as I look for it. I need it to be available now so that it is uh, not a waiting list title. Our road trip is tomorrow. I don't want to join a waiting list. I also want that book to be uh, my mom's favorite genre, mystery historical fiction. So the, that is the subjects that we'll choose. And then let's say a new release as well, maybe something that came out in the last year or so. So I'm going to start up here at the top of our library page with those filters. And this filter is perfect for the criteria that I'm giving available now. This is going to be a full list of all titles that are available currently at the library. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to show you is how to set an app wide preference. So right here in this dark blue bar here, you can see a preferences button. Preferences are filters that stick and stay and continue to be applied to all of your lists in Libby. So a good example of maybe a preference that you might want to continue to filter out every list that you look at is language. So right now I have Libby set to show me any language. That means when I look for a book, I'm seeing Spanish titles, I'm seeing Russian, French, whatever the library has purchased. But I only speak English, much to my high school French teacher's dismay. So I am going to select English. That means moving forward, anytime I look for a book, I will only see titles that were written in English. Now, a few other options that I see quite popular on the bookmobile for uh, saved preferences, ones that continue to filter your lists, are format. Right now, when I look for a book, I'm seeing ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. Now, if you're someone who specifically likes audio or specifically likes ebooks, then you can select whichever is the format you prefer. And that way, you'll only see that format as you look for books. The last one here is audience. Right now, I'm seeing all. That means I'm seeing juvenile, YA, general and mature content. I point this one out if you have kiddos at home, you will, they have their own device and you wanna make sure they're only seeing age appropriate content. You can set a juvenile preference. That's gonna mean they're only gonna see juvenile content or YA. I'm gonna leave those as all. I'm just gonna keep my English preference here and tap on apply preferences. And now we can see there's a one next to it there. So I have my preference set. Now I'm gonna show you how to temporarily um, refine and filter your searches. So this one sticks and stays. It's gonna to continue to filter your searches every time you come back to Libby and look for a book. But let's show you that temporary way to refine. So right now I'm looking at all available titles in English, but I'm seeing books, audiobooks, and magazines. I'm going to filter this list to just audiobooks by tapping audiobooks here. 
Now I'm just seeing the 21,000 available audiobooks in English. And I'm going to come over to Refine. So you'll notice when I tap Refine, it actually shows the same categories that we saw in Preferences. But as I mentioned, Preferences stick and stay. Refining is temporary for the search or browsing that you're doing right at that moment. And then the next time you go and look for a book, those will revert back to their default. So I'm going to come down to subjects here, tap on subject and choose mystery. We're going to look for a mystery historical fiction. So we drop from 21,000 to 2,800 but I'm only looking at mystery. So I'm gonna come back to refine, tap on subject again, and this time I'll select historical fiction. So now I'm looking at 208 titles. And what I wanna point out here is that I'm not looking at a list of mystery titles and historical fiction titles. I'm actually looking at a list of mystery titles that are also historical fiction titles. And this is a great way for you to find niche genres, um, you know, maybe you're someone who likes to read comedy horror, you could do that. Now, two, three, four of those subject uh, filters work pretty well. If you get much above that, you're going to have a very limited list. So I like to say the sweet spot is two to four of those subject filters, um, and you'll be good to go. Now I'm going to come back to refine one more time. We just have one more criteria to meet here. We've already narrowed our list down quite a bit to 208 audiobooks, but I want to sort this list now by release date. So I'm currently looking at titles uh, by popularity in this list. I'm going to come down to sort by and instead sort this list by release date. And that's going to make it so the newest titles show up at the top. And then as we make our way down the list, those titles will get older. So we started out this tip with 60, 70,000 titles. Um, I think 77, I believe. And we've narrowed it down with just a couple of clicks to 208. So I would have spent all day looking for a book earlier. Now it's just going to take me a couple hours probably, but I love looking for books, so I'm not bothered by that. And that is how you can filter and refine your lists so that you can find the books that you like faster. Now, I am going to stay on this screen here for tip number three, which is all about tags. Joe mentioned this is our favorite tip of the day. I could talk about tags forever. Tags are how you can organize your books in Libby. You can keep track and make lists. You can create lists of uh, to be read titles. If you want to make a wish list, you can keep track of narrators whose voices, you know, great your give make your skin crawl you don't want to listen to them ever again um you can get really creative with it as well i have a father-in-law who is a huge reader you literally cannot get him a gift that is not a book otherwise it sits in a corner and does nothing and you wasted your money so i'm always constantly having to find new books for him to to buy him for father's day christmas things like that so I have my own tag for him on my Libby device throughout the year. If I come across a book that I think he'll like, I tag it with his tag. And then when I go to the bookstore for Christmas, it's two seconds to open my tag, find books that I've already chosen for him. And then I can spend the rest of the time at the bookstore looking for my own books. So it's really a selfish tag, but it is a creative tag. You can use it. You can use tags in of any way that you would like. So let's show you how to create tags. And then we're going to talk about um, where to find those tags within the Libby app in the form of lists, and then how to export those tags out of the app for printing and more. So let's stick on this page here. I'm going to say, let's come across Velvet Was the Night here. And I want to read this book, but I'm not in the mood to read this book right now. So I want to save it for later. What I'm going to do is tap on tag. This is going to allow us to create a new tag 
or we can tap on any of our existing tags if we want to add it to an existing tag here. Regular tags are just for organizational sake. You can create wish lists or recipe uh, uh, recipe lists. You can also um, have smart tags as well. These do have special abilities. So the two smart tags here on the screen that you see, the first is a borrowed smart tag. And it looks like a little receipt there. And that borrowed smart tag automatically tags any books that you borrow in Libby for a nice, easy, accessible list of any books that you've borrowed in the past. Your notify me tag is specific to magazines. You'll be prompted to create a notify me tag the first time you borrow a magazine. You can name it whatever you want. I did notify me mag for simplicity's sake. And what it will do is any magazine that you tag with your notify me tag, then you will receive a notification anytime a new issue of that magazine is added to your library's digital collection. So it, it makes it so you don't have to keep on checking back in to the New Yorker to see if a new issue came out. Libby will alert you if you add that magazine to your notify me tag. So smart tags, special abilities, regular tags, just for organization's sake. Now I'm going to walk through creating a new tag here. So I'll tap on new tag and we can name the tag. We even give you a few ideas. You can also add a description. I'm going to name this tag here. I'm a big fan of genre tags. I'm you know, only sometimes interested in mystery titles. I have to be in a certain mood. So I'll type in mystery here and keep a list of some mystery titles that I uh, want to read later. And then, of course, you can add that description. I know what this tag means, so I'm just going to tap on done. And you'll see that that tag has now appeared right next to that jacket cover in our search. Now, this is one of the reasons I love tags so much, and here is why. I am looking for that audiobook for my mom and I's road trip, and as I scroll down this page, I come across The War Widow. Well, that has my to be read tag attached there. I know I wanted to borrow that book in the past. I saved it for later. So my work is done here. I'm probably going to borrow that book and be on my way. But let's say that the war widow didn't show up in this search and I'm scrolling down the list and I come across the devil in the dark water. Well, that has the borrowed smart tag right next to it. And prior to this tag being uh, created, I probably would have read the first 50 pages of this book or listened to the first 20 minutes of the book before I realized that I'd read it before. Now with this tag, I can see that I've borrowed it in Libby. I don't need to bother looking at the title details page or anything like that. I can skip right on past it and continue on with my search. So that is how you can create tags and start your lists. And now I want to show you where you can find those lists. So instead of the library tab where we're looking for a book, we're going to come over to the shelf where our borrowed books and holds are. And up at the top of the screen next to those loans and holds filters, you'll see that yellow tag filter. If you tap on that, you'll see all of your lists appear in this menu and you can choose what list you'd like to look at. So I'm gonna tap on my to be read list here. This is my wish list. And I can see all of the books that I've added to that wish list. Now, one thing I wanna point out here on this screen is something very important for you in Massachusetts. So over on the right side of the screen, you'll see this library card icon with the plus sign there. You're gonna actually find this icon when you're searching, browsing on your shelf. You'll see it everywhere that you look in Libby really. When you tap on that icon, <clears throat> one thing you can do is borrow or place a hold directly from that screen. But more importantly, like I said, in Massachusetts, this is especially clutch. 
you'll see all of your eight library digital collections down at the bottom of the screen, and you'll see how many copies are available at each of those libraries or uh, what one has the shortest wait list. And that will make it so that you can look at that book in particular through all eight digital collections. And it makes it really, really easy to choose where you wanna borrow it from. All right, so that's that library card icon. Like I said, you'll see it everywhere that you go in the Libby app. It really comes in handy. Now up at the top of this tag, I am gonna point out this actions button here. <clears throat> if you tap on actions, you'll be able to rename the tag or delete it. I like to point that out if you didn't want that smart borrowed tag. Some people don't want Libby auto tagging your books. You can delete that if you'd like. And you also get the ability to export that tag. So if you tap on export, Libby will give you a few options for how you'd like to export it by file type. I'm gonna choose table here for demonstration. And once you're in your data export page, you'll see all of your tag books listed there down at the bottom of the screen. Up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see the share icon. It's that square with the arrow pointing up. If you tap on the share icon, you can send this list out in a text message or an email. If you like to force your friends to read the same books that you're reading so that you can have someone to talk about it, I certainly do that to my sister. And then down below, you'll also have the option to print. So maybe you want to print out a physical copy for book club so you can you know, vote on the next book club book. That is an option that's available to you as well. And that is tags. Our favorite, favorite tip. Like I said, I could talk about tags all day. I, I have thousands and thousands of titles tagged on my personal device. It is one of my favorites. All right. We're going to pop into our last tip of the day here before we get into our Q&A where we can live demo any of the questions that you asked. But first, we're going to talk about notes and highlights. So like Joe said, great for students, also great for book clubbers, or if you're like Joe and I, we just annotate our books for fun. And that is what we're going to show you now. So I'm going to open up my copy here of Pride and Prejudice. And when you want to reference a passage that you or a sentence uh, a passage, a paragraph, whatever you'd like to remember, you're going to start at the very beginning of that passage. And you're going to hold your finger on the first word there in the passage. I move my mouse slightly to the left so you can see that the turns blue. And I'm keeping my finger on the word. If you just tap quickly, it's going to turn the page. So keep that in mind. Keep your finger on the word and then start dragging it across the screen until the passage that you want to remember turns blue. Then when you lift your finger up off the screen, that's when you'll get that highlight menu. So we can tap on highlight. That will default to the last color you chose, or you can change colors if you like to stay organized. Once you place your highlight, to add a note to the highlight, you just tap on the highlight itself. It drops down that note menu. And here you can type out whatever you'd like to uh, say about that passage. I'm just gonna do a quick, this is a note example and tap on save. You can type quite a bit in here. I've typed full paragraphs. Um, so you're not limited to just a few words. And now I'm gonna page forward here. So I'm gonna tap on the side of the screen. And let's say I want to now reference the uh, past note or highlight that I've made. So I'm farther in the book. I want to go back and see a specific highlight there. I'm going to tap on the center of the screen. That's going to make those menus reappear. And then up in the top right hand corner, you'll see uh, three bookmarks sitting in a row. That is the icon we want to tap on here to view all of our notes and highlights within this title. 
So let's say I want to go back to chapter two, page 14, reference this note. I'm going to tap on it. Libby takes me all the way back there. And I just have to tap on the highlight itself for the note to drop down. So here is that note that I made. So that's how you can find it if you still have that book borrowed from the library. So Pride and Prejudice was on my shelf. I currently am in my lending period. Now, sometimes you book club comes up, you picked a popular title, you borrowed it, you made your notes and highlights, and then it returned to the library and there is a waiting list. Don't worry if that is the case because you can still access those notes and highlights and even print them out as well. And I'll show you how to do that here. So we're going to leave this ebook. I'm gonna go back to my shelf. And what you wanna do when you want to find your notes and highlights from a book that you've borrowed in the past is to go to the details page. And we talked about the details page in getting started. You tap on the jacket cover when you search for it. So I'm gonna go down and search. We know exactly what we're looking for, right? I'm looking for a book I've borrowed in the past called The Guest List. I'm gonna search for it by tapping on search. And then I'm going to tap on the jacket cover itself and that is gonna take me to the details page. Now, once you're on the details page, you will see your reading journey. Your reading journey will allow you to look at all of the actions that you've taken when you borrow a book. So I'm gonna tap on reading journey here. <clears throat> Up at the top, you'll see this actions button and in the actions button, you'll see export reading data. So following the same steps that I just showed you for tagging titles, exporting those tags, you can export your uh, reading data, AKA notes and highlights, and that will allow you to send them in a text message, an email, or you can print those out. If you don't wanna take it that far, but you still want to reference those notes and highlights, on the same page, so we're still on the reading journey. If you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see the timeline for the title and it will list out your highlights. You just have to tap on each individual highlight to see the full passage that you highlighted and then your note will appear underneath in quotes. So you have two different ways that you can look and reference at those notes and highlights even after the title has returned to the library. And that wraps up our fourth and final tip of the day, uh, making notes and highlights. And it looks like Joe's internet might be going out. So I'm just going to run into our Q&A for you. So we're getting into our Q&A period. You can ask any questions that you'd like using the Q&A button um, in Zoom's meeting controls. And um, some questions we'll answer in text and some we will do a little demo here on the screen, okay? So let me start looking here at our questions. First question that I see here, we get this a lot. Can you print from a book um, a recipe from a cookbook? So that will depend. Um, if the cookbook is, um, images instead of text. So kind of if it's formatted similarly to a magazine, that is not something that you can highlight because it's an image. And so if that is the case, um, you won't be able to print that out. If that is the case, what I would recommend instead is bookmarking that page that you like in particular, and that way you can tag the title in a recipe tag maybe, and then when you can borrow it and you can reference that note and highlight, or sorry, not the note and highlight, the, um, the bookmark. And I will um, show you how to bookmark a page here. Let me open up, even though this is an ebook, it will look the exact same in um, every format. You'll see a little uh, bookmark there. 
You can tap on that bookmark. It will turn a color when that bookmark is placed and you actually find it in the same place as your notes and highlights. So those three bookmarks in a row, you'll be able to tap on it. It will drag you right on back to that page. So that's what I would recommend when you are looking for a recipe from a cookbook. If the cookbook is formatted uh, the same way that an ebook is, as in text, then you could highlight the full recipe and follow those steps that I showed you to print out. So two options um, for uh, referencing a recipe from a cookbook. All right, so Michael asked uh, preferences and refine both set to title, but there are 1000 plus pages. Um, one can select a page number to view, but not a letter. So you have to guess what page number a particular letter might be on. Yes, so I'm gonna show you how to suggest a feature that is not a feature that does exist right now in Libby. So anytime you come across a feature that you would like added um, to the app, what you're gonna do is come down to the Libby icon. That's that Libby menu that we talked about in our getting started session. And once you open up that Libby menu, you can tap on get some help. And um, <clears throat> you can either go to the help site, but I just recommend you can type in anything here if you just want to directly get to tech support. What we do is we try to get you to be able to find the answer using Libby. So let's say tags, you can type in anything here. And then once you've searched for a topic, then you'll be prompted to ask our support team. So again, you can type in anything if you know that the answer is not going to be found. Um, and when you tap on ask our support team, that's when you can say you have an idea. And here you can type in, I want to be able to jump to a page based on the alphabet. And what that's going to do is it will go to our developers here at Overdrive and they will prioritize it based on the amount of people who ask for it. So one of the things I always tell people both in these webinars and um, out on the bookmobile is anytime you think of a feature that you want added to the Libby app, come in here say that you want it and that way you can be added to it's not your name or anything but it's an upvote is what we call it um and that way the more upvotes that that feature gets the higher on the priority list it goes so i even as an overdrive employee i'm always asking for features so i definitely recommend if it's something that you really want always come in and here and ask because it does have an impact on what features get prioritized in our uh, what we call our roadmap, so our future plans for the app. That's a great suggestion, Michael. I would absolutely use that feature as well. All right, I have OverDrive and Libby apps on my phone. I'm a bit confused on which to use. <clears throat> That's a good question too, Diane. So the main differences between OverDrive and Libby here. First, I'll start out by saying Overdrive is our flagship app. It's the first app that we made. And <clears throat> after receiving a bunch of feedback about Overdrive, our developers decided it made more sense to start new and use that feedback to create a whole new app instead of reverting everything and going back and changing everything that Overdrive is. So. Libby is really based on user feedback. And some of the changes and differences between OverDrive and Libby are in OverDrive, when you <clears throat> want to find the books that you've borrowed already, so when you go to your shelf, you have to go to each individual library and then look at the shelf from that library collection. In Libby, it doesn't matter what library you're using, all of your books show up on a single shelf. So the, the ease of use in that sense is way, way better. 
So you'll be able to find all of your books in one place. You're not going to have to jump around the app to find which library first and then go to that shelf. Some other things that are changed uh, that are different too is the sign in process. So the onboarding process is much easier. You sign in with your library card. You don't need to create an account. Um, one of my favorite changes from Overdrive to Libby are uh, tags. So in Overdrive, you have a wish list and you have a history. In Libby, like I showed you, you can create as many tags as you want. You can add as many books as you want to that. You can name them whatever you want. So it's a much more robust um, system to keep track of books that you like or books that you hate um, in Libby. The other thing as well is downloading audiobooks. So in Overdrive, when you download an audiobook, it might come in chunks. It will be like chapter one to chapter five, chapter six to chapter 11. In Libby, it downloads as a single file. And what the benefit of that is, is when you download a book in Libby, you're much less likely to lose just one piece of the book. In Overdrive, it is possible that one of those sections doesn't download. You have to go and re-download the book. So the downloading the audiobook process is much simpler as well. So um, Diane, I would, I would honestly suggest for anyone who has Overdrive and Libby is to keep both on your phone, but practice on Libby. And once you get used to it, I can almost guarantee that you will prefer Libby over Overdrive because the ease of use is uh, so much better. You will see all of the same titles between the two apps. So you're not gonna see a different collection in Overdrive that you see in uh, Libby. You'll see all of the same books. It's just different experiences while using the app. All right, great, great questions. Looks like a lot of our questions have slowed down. I'm gonna um, give just a couple extra minutes here for you to be able to ask questions if you still have them. While uh, we're waiting for any more questions to come in, I'm gonna also show you just one more time how to find help and support here. So. Down in the bottom of the navigation bar, you'll go to that Libby icon. You'll find those app settings. Then you'll tap on get some help. Up at the top, you can search for those keywords like maybe returning titles and tap on search. That's gonna give you those articles. So this is really a, I can figure it out myself. You just gotta give me the instructions and Libby will do it. If you can't find the answers you're looking for, maybe by tapping into the returning books um, article here, you wanted more information than that, you can come down to ask our support team. And again, this is where you can find a problem, a question or an idea, and you can submit it to our technical support team. So I always want to point that out here at the very end, because that is how you'll be able to um, reach our tech support team. So can I borrow more than one audiobook at a time? That's a really good question. So you can borrow five books at a time. Those can be all ebooks, all audiobooks, a mixture of the two. So five books you'll be able to borrow at once. You'll be able to have 15 holds at once. And now I also wanna mention you have eight digital collections. All eight of those digital collections are gonna give you a loan limit. So even though your loan limit is five at CLAMS, maybe at CW Mars, it's gonna be another five. That means you have 10 books you can borrow at once. That's the same with your holds as well. So you can have five loans. Those are ebooks or audiobooks. Magazines are special. Everyone can borrow those at the same time. They don't have wait lists ever. They're what we call simultaneous use. And so everyone can borrow as many magazines as they want. And uh, those do not affect your loan limit. So the loan limit will only be for ebooks and audiobooks. Very good question.
All right, Joe, I think it looks like our questions have slowed down. We have about a minute ago, uh, left to go. You wanna sign us off? Yeah, I will take back over. Thank you everyone for joining us today for our Learning Libby with the Experts webinar and for your participation and wonderful questions throughout the morning today. Uh, one final reminder, of course, you will receive an email tomorrow from Zoom that includes a link to our recorded webinar. You can view this using the link for the next 30 days, uh, but then after that, the video will expire. If you'd like to keep that permanently, click through the link and hit the button that says download. It's big, you can't miss it. That will include the subtitles and also all of the Q&A. Uh, when I end the meeting in just a minute here, uh, a survey is going to pop up in your web browser. If you could fill that out for us, we'd greatly appreciate it. Let us know what you liked or what we could do differently in the future. And of course, as Marissa mentioned again, you can always reach our tech support team 365 days of the year by going into the Libby menu and tapping on get some help. So with all of that said, once again, thank you so much for joining us today and happy reading. Happy reading.